I'm proud to say that this is our 14th season of Fox Sports Outdoors, and by the end of the year, we will have showed you 15 brand new locations where we've never stepped foot or launched a boat in before, and this week is one of those. It's a crappie fishing destination we've never been to before, but a great test tube to show you a great warm weather crappie fishing technique. Come on, let's get it going. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. It's time for your weekly fishing reports and real time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey everybody, let's go fishing. I'm so happy to have you along for this week's episode and I'm really excited to share with you some information that's gonna help you put more fish in your fish basket on your stringer and on your dinner table this week. Every year during the warm weather months, the most reliable way I know of to locate and catch crappie is by fishing brush piles. Some man-made, some natural, but they all hold crappie during the warm weather months from May through about October. On this week's show, we're gonna give you a step-by-step -step instructional way to go about locating some crappie of your very own. And to do that, hey, I wanna show you something. This is a lake that's located south and east of the Temple and Belton area in Central Texas. Welcome to Lake Granger. It's about a 4,000 acre Corps of Engineers Lake. And as you can see behind me here, it's uh, got some rocky points. It's got some brush around the shorelines. And we'll kind of walk around this way. This is the courtesy dock. And you can see on this side, it's kind of got some steep bluff banks falling off. It's got some deep water, some shallow. It's gonna be a really good test tube for us to show you this method of locating and catching crappie. So I'm really excited about showing you the lake today. And while we're doing that, we're going around the region for your local fishing and lake reports for this week from our expert team of insider reporters. Let's get it all started back at the FSN studios with your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are highlighting Saturday as the best fishing opportunity over the Labor Day weekend. Conditions are listed as good with peak times beginning at 2.55 a.m. and 3.16 p.m. Expect the sun to rise at 7.04 and set at 7.47. And the moon will only be 11% visible. Stay with us for fishing news from around the area. Well, we've made it out in the boat and there is some gear that you're gonna need if you're gonna catch these crappie off these brush piles. Beginning with a way to get off the shore, you've gotta have a boat. It doesn't have to be the top end Nitro Z20 like mine, but you need a John boat, a canoe, a kayak, some way to get off the shore. Secondly, you need some good sonar, some good electronics. Now this is my Lowrance HDS Gen 3 system and it does everything and it shows you the brush very, very clearly. As a matter of fact, you can see the brush pile coming into the screen right now. There it is. You're looking for something attached to the bottom with a solid yellow core that indicates brush. Now the entry level Lowrance hook system much less expensive, will get you on the fish and show you the brush just as well. Next, you need a marker buoy. So I'm gonna throw it back there just to get us in the vicinity of where this brush is. And then coming up next, we're gonna show you how to home in on that and how to catch the crappie out of it. Stay with us, we're coming right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. There's one. That's a good crappie. All right. Well, we have one aboard. Hey everybody, we've made it out here on Granger Lake and got a good crappie right off the bat. That would be a good keeper if we were keeping them. We're not keeping them today. I don't feel like cleaning them and I got a big mess of them in the freezer. So that one's going back. Well, let me give you the first uh, hint about this technique. We got that marker buoy out and the Interesting thing I did was threw it off to the side of the brush pile. So it's not right on top of the pile. That way I can work the boat around over here on top of the brush pile without getting all tangled up in that buoy with my trolling motor or my outboard motor. The second thing about 
doing this style of fishing is a vertical presentation. So you literally want to get straight up and down over the top of the brush. If you cast the bait, you're going to be pulling horizontally into the brush pile. You'll get snagged every single cast. If you drop it straight down, you can take up that slack once it gets in the top of that brush, easy lift it up. And if you feel the brush, you can shake your rod tip a little bit. And most of the time it'll come through the brush. If you're fishing vertically, you can get it loose. And most of the time that's when you're going to get a bite is when you pull into the brush, you shake it loose very gently. You've got a piece of brush here. You've got your bait three or four inches from it. That's right where the fish is. And he hammers it vertically only no horizontal no casting that will get you bit and catch you the most crappie in these brush piles here's some fishing and lake reports from where you live this part of the program is brought to you by visit jacksonville northeast florida offers great fishing family fun beaches top restaurants and resorts that are easy to get to and offer outdoor fun for everyone so come on visit jacksonville well, Alabama fishing off Dolphin Island has really turned on the last few days. I was talking to that Captain Charlie Gray over at Dolphin Island. He's been catching limit numbers of spotted sea trout in that two to four pound class. These are really nice uh, early fall uh, spotted sea trout. He's catching them on popping corks uh, with live shrimp or live croakers. He's fishing in Mississippi Sound with a low end of Mobile Bay. And he recommends fishing early in the morning as early as you can get it during a flood tide. There's plenty of good redfish around. He's catching some limits of those. Uh, the reds are under bait fish pods. Offshore in Alabama, the Spanish mackerel fishing has been very good around the beaches. Uh, most of these fish are caught uh, by cast jigs or slow trolling with uh, small spoons like Clark spoons. And farther out, uh, plenty of that floats them from the heavy rains from a few weeks ago is out along the beach areas from six to 20 miles offshore and they're catching lots of dolphin around that flotsam. Uh, the snapper fishing ends in uh, Mississippi September 5th. It's two a day. If you want some, go get them. In Georgia, Captain Tim Cutting is doing very well in St. Simons Island uh, for a good sized flounder, trout, and redfish in shore. Well, that's it for the coastal south. Get out in the water and take a youngster with you when you go. This week's Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi freshwater fishing report is brought to you by Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. Boasting 69,000 acres of clear blue perfection, the area offers hotels, lakefront cabins, public boat ramps, and restaurants. If you prefer big fish in a big pond, Gunnersville is the right destination. www.fishgunnersvillelake.com As we approach the Labor Day weekend holiday, the Deep South is mired in the late summer. Some areas need rain while others are drowning in precipitation. At the same time, the entire region continues to be brutally hot. To overcome this summer pattern, Alabama and Georgia anglers can head to Lake Eufaula on the Chattahoochee River where it forms the state border. In the late afternoon up until dark, it's prime time for hybrid bass fishing on this 45,000 acre impoundment. These fish suspend in about 15 feet of water, but it is over areas that are 20 to 25 feet deep. Trolling deep diving crankbaits just above the fish is the best tactic. Top areas to target are channel ledges or points at the creek mouths. These hybrids will average one to two pounds each, but five to six pounders are possible. Over in Mississippi, the fishermen are catching largemouth bass on red and green soft plastics fished around the willow bushes near channel edges on Lake Jeff Davis this week. This 100 acre lake is near the town of Prince. Hey everybody, welcome back. Doing this brush pile fishing, once you get that jig down there and let it hit the bottom or hit the top of the brush pile, you want to give it a little slack, lift that rod tip very gently. If one doesn't bite it, drop the rod tip, give it a little hop like that. You got it. All right. That is a good one right there. All right, there you go. So it's that little pop of the rod tip that will many times make that crappie bite. So the deal is, let's let him go back right there. So here's the deal. You've got this jig, and by the way, you wanna pull your knot around to where the bait will hang horizontally in the water like that. You don't wanna let the knot get pulled around where the jig hangs vertical like that. You wanna 
slide that knot back toward the hook and get it to hang this way. Now, so the crappie's sitting by the brush. You drop it in there. If he doesn't bite it at first, you want to not lift it and make it fall. You want to drop it, pop that rod tip and pull it back to the same spot. Drop it, pop it, and pull it back to the same spot and he'll just reach out there and grab it. Hey, let's get you some fishing and lake reports. Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by the Dead Dog Saloon located on the beautiful Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. Make sure you put us on your list of destinations to visit when you're in the Grand Strand area. We're open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and all the locals love hanging out here. Come by and check out our food, view, and our music. Let's talk about the saltwater side of things. Just last week we had some crazy things going on here along the Grand Strand and in other areas of the Carolinas. These warm water temperatures, the oxygen has dropped and these flounder at the bottom of that water level have really had to come up to the beaches to get some oxygen. It's oxygen deprivation. It happens every four or five years. I got out, did some fishing on the Garden City Pier here in Garden City Beach, South Carolina and enjoyed three days of hanging out with some good people on that pier out there fishing and catching a lot of flounders like you see in the pictures here. Also in the saltwater side of things, the Spanish mackerel are going to start showing up really good. We're getting to some northeast wind, water temperatures are going to start cooling, the manhaden and mullet are coming in, and the Spanish and kings will be with them. Again, I always tell you, live bait for Spanish mackerel, it doesn't get much more fun. Again, a treble hook with some light line, light wire, something in the 20 pound class, either straight wire or seven strand, work great. All bright it to your main line and fish those schools of Spanish, chumming and getting them turned on. Get out and enjoy a great time, and as always, remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. This has been your Carolina's Report, brought to you by Dead Dog Saloon. You know, a lot of times if you catch a few crappie out of a brush pile and they stop biting, sometimes they'll just kind of spook a little bit and move off to the side of the brush or up over the top of it. You can still catch them by swimming the bait through, so you put it down there, and you just start a steady lift of that rod tip, higher, 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 and then one grabs it like that. Good one. Wow, that's cool. So I actually saw some of those fish fanning out on my sonar, on my Lawrence HDS up there, and I could tell that they were kind of getting spooked a little bit. And many times they just rise up above the brush. So you put the jig down in the brush, and then once again, you want to keep that knot pulled back. And you just start a slow, steady swim up, 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 up. They feed up. They don't like to feed down, they feed up. So you keep raising it, raising it, and a lot of times they'll keep following it and finally get it. So if you, if you hit a lull, you hit a dead spot, just start moving around and fan out around the edges and over the top, and a lot of times you can just keep right on catching them. Hey, we'll be back to Granger Lake in Central Texas, brush pile fishing for crappie right after this. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. Motor guide trolling motors, because accuracy matters. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. go. All right. There's just a good little toad for you. Back he goes. See my spot right there. I've had to move. Caught a bunch off one brush pile and it slowed down and that's the thing. You've got to keep hopping. Hop from pile to pile to pile until you find the one that's hot and the one that's got fish on it. Here's the next key though. Every brush pile has got a sweet spot on it. You may have a whole brush pile but there's going to be one little key piece. A little branch sticking out. A trunk a point coming out off the end of it, a shallow spot up on the top. Somewhere on that brush pile is going to be one little spot where the crappie tend to congregate and they keep migrating back to. So what you want to do is fish your way around it, use your trolling motor, ease your way around it, and use your, your buoy, your marker buoy, as a base, and then figure out where the sweet spot is. So like that one was about a boat length straight away from the shoreline in a straight line and that's where that crappie was so you can bet i'll back off try that exact spot again and i'll keep fishing my way around till i find the spot on the spot once you find that you can even drop a second marker buoy down on the best spot on the brush pile and you can just hammer fish after fish a lot of times speaking of fish after fish here's an insider reporter with more lake reports and fishing reports for this week 
Taking care of your boat means maintaining your boat. And to maintain your boat, you need two things for sure. Lucas Safeguard Ethanol Treatment and Lucas Fuel Stabilizer. Run this in every tank, put this in there every time you park it, your boat will always run like a top. LucasOil.com. Hey guys, welcome to the Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. You know, we've had a ton of rain over the past three or four weeks, way, way more than normal. And what that's done is a few things. One, it's kept the water level up in reservoirs that, that don't have an influx of water and typically in the summertime they get low. Uh, number two, it's created current uh, in, in creeks and rivers and streams and, and, and things of that nature that uh, typically don't have a lot of flow in the summertime. And number three, it's really lowered the water temperature um, on, on just about all bodies of water. Uh, I was fishing a dewatering area off Kentucky Lake this week in my kayak and uh, the water temperature was seven, in the low 70s, which this time of year is typically in the high 80s to even, even in the 90s sometimes. Um, I'm going to give you a few places to go check out if you have time. The Caney Fork River, the Duck River, and the Buffalo River. If you like to kayak or small boat, they're awesome. A lot of smallmouth fishing. A buddy of mine caught a big, big muskie the other day out of his kayak on the Caney Fork River. Um, Kentucky Lake's on fire. Uh, one of my best friends guides out here every day and he is just crushing them. It's, it's, it's really, really good for this time of year. Lake Cumberland and Dale Hollow, the night bite is still just off the charts. So guys, it's good. There's a lot of diversity. We'd love to see you on the water. God bless. There we go. A good one. Well, we're catching them. I tell you, we've caught a bunch of fish today and you haven't seen half the fish we've actually caught today. We've only been able to show you a few of them, but just some good keeper crappie like that. No huge ones or anything. Before we go to the next break, I want to show you one of my best tricks one of my best techniques if you're going to be a good brush pile crappie angler you're going to get snagged a lot if that jig if that jig head is not in that brush and getting snagged then you're not where the fish are so you've got to be able to get it loose here's one of my best tricks i'm going to pitch it in here and get it hung in the top of this brush pile and then i want to show you how to get it loose okay so i've intentionally snagged my bait down in that brush so what you want to do is use your trolling motor and get straight up and down over the top of where you're snagged. Next thing you want to do is open your bale, give yourself some slack, reach in here, grab it with one of your fingers on your reel, pull it back on a slack line and pop it like a bow and arrow. Pop like that and it, it came right loose. It will do it about 90% of the time. If you don't pull and snag it too hard, just get over the top, give yourself slack. Don't pop it like a bass fiddle on a tight line. You want to give it slack, pull it back, shoot it like a bow and arrow, pull it back again, and eventually it'll pop itself loose if you're straight up and down over the top of it. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday night at 6, or catch the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button and see lots of how-to and product videos by clicking the how-to button. Also, stay up to date with the latest fishing news, videos, and photos by clicking the follow button on our Twitter feed. And get lots of that same info by clicking the like button on our Facebook page. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat. It's a tracker. Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. Mercury Marine. Official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And Lawrence Electronics. Find. Navigate. Dominate. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. Your chance for guidance from professional anglers. This week, David wants to know, what determines how tightly I should set my drag? For some advice, we found Bassmaster Elite Angler, Jason Christie. I would set your drag depending on the bait that you're throwing. If I'm throwing anything with treble hooks, you know, I want to be able to grab the line and pretty much and pull it, you know, with a, with a little bit of tension. I'm flipping, you know, I want it as tight as I can get it. Of course, I use bigger line. Uh, in that in-between stuff, like a spinner bait or casting a jig, you know, I, I want to, when I set the hook, I want it, I don't want the drag to slip 
until it gets, you know, the rod gets back here. And that, what that does is for guys like me that set the hook really, really hard, it keeps us from breaking our line. You know, if you don't set the hook real hard, uh, then you can go ahead and tighten your drag down. You just need to remember that when you get that big fish on uh, and, and there's not any cover, you need to loosen the drag a little bit. Thank you, Jason. If you have a question for one of the pros, visit foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Ask the Pro link, and let us know. Now let's see which big fish photo gets someone a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. Hey, it's time to give away a pair of Costa sunglasses to the winner of this week's Costa Catch of the Week contest. Here's the winner. Shay Marcris of Fairhope, Alabama, showing a 17-pound triple tail, the locals call them blackfish, caught at Mobile Bay, Alabama. If you want a chance to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click in the Costa Catch of the Week box on the right side of the home page, and follow the instructions. You must be at least 18 years of age to enter and to win. And if you'd like to see all of the great Costa frame and lens styles, go back to the Costa logo on the front page of our site, click on that, and you'll see everything, including the 580 polycarbonate and glass lenses in all the different colors and shades, and you'll see all of the frame styles and colors, including the frame I was wearing on this week's show. It's called Harpoon. On the Academy Right Stuff, it's the right gear to catch crappie out of brush piles on your favorite lake, and it begins with a great crappie spinning rod. This is the Lou's Wally Marshall Pro Series rod. It's custom designed by Mr. Crappie himself to catch crappie in just these circumstances. I like the six and a half foot medium light action and I like to pair it with the Lou's Wally Marshall Signature Series reel that goes perfectly with it. I've got it spooled with eight pound test Stren fluorocast line. And as far as the lure is concerned, we used the Bobby Garland Moglo Jig Head in either the 124th or 116th ounce size. You can go even heavier if the wind is blowing or if you're in deep water. And we put on that a plastic body. This is the Bobby Garland Slab Slayer in the small size and the black with yellow tail seemed to be the ticket today. And one other key piece of gear, you need a couple of three marker buoys to not only mark the brush pile, but the sweet spot the spot on the spot where all the crappie are hanging out. I really hate that our country seems so divided right now. We seem to be split right down the middle on all kinds of issues, such as how we support law enforcement or which lives matter group we might believe in or subscribe to. There's pressure on everybody to take either one side or the other. And while there are issues that we should never compromise, including respect for the law and those who protect us. There is a way to have a mandate to be kind and caring to everyone. There's a way to disagree with someone else's viewpoint and still be compassionate, loving, and caring about them at the same time. I hope you learned something today from our tutorial on how to locate those brush piles in your favorite reservoir or lake and how to catch your own crappie out of them. We will see you next week. Until then, from Granger Lake in Central Texas, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.